Now the Republicans have a slim majority in the House. They've made it clear they will use that power to protect Donald Trump and go after Joe Biden. And to do that, they put several far-right extremists who tried to overthrow the 2020 election, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, on key committees with the power to investigate the White House. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. The Republicans still cannot seem to grasp the differences between the small number of classified documents that were discovered at President Biden's home and office and the much larger pile of documents Trump stashed at Mar-a-Lago and refused to give back. In fact, they keep asking the same dumb question. Why won't the FBI search Biden's home just like they searched Trump's beach resort? What's real concerning to me is how justice is applied and is it applied equally? Why do you raid President Trump? My concern is how there's such a discrepancy in how former President Trump was treated by raiding Mar-a-Lago, by getting the security cameras, by taking pictures of documents on the, on the floor, by going through Melania's closet. All right, first of all, Melania's closet sounds like a store you'd find at a mall in the 90s. <laughs> Wear the only clothes that give you that Melania smile. <laughs> they could have also called it Cold Topic. Also, I doubt Melania only has one closet. My guess is she has multiple closets for clothes and also a secret closet that lets her escape out the back like the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe whenever Trump tries to talk to her. Mel? Mel, I'd love to get your thoughts on this speech, Mel. Mel? Mel, did you flee to Narnia again? Give my best to Aslan. Aslan the lion. We love Aslan the lion, don't we? We love him, don't we? He came up to me once, folks. Big lion, strong lion. Tears running down his face and onto his whiskers, and he said, I'll never forget it, he said to me, Mr. Trump. <laughs> also, I don't have any trouble believing that Trump would hide classified documents in a closet the way a teenager hides porns in a shoebox. They'll never find this, especially if it's labeled Donald Trump, stamp collection, <laughs> not porn. That's how we hid porn in the old days. Back when we had physical pornography, now it's all digital, but you lose that tactile experience. <laughs> That's why people are getting back into analog media these days. You know how everyone's collecting vinyl and cassette tapes again? Well, I just stayed at a very classy Airbnb in upstate New York that had a beautiful mid-century credenza filled with vintage hustlers. <laughs> and I'll tell you, there's nothing better after a long day of apple picking than settling into an Eames chair with some good old-fashioned pornography. <laughs> they the articles! Again, I cannot underscore enough how different these cases are. Biden has discovered and turned over about 20 documents so far. And let's be clear, documents he should not have. Well, Trump had over 300. Trump refused for more than a year to turn them all over, lied about having turned them over, instructed staffers to lie, move them around, claimed they were his, and claimed he could declassify them with his mind. He did the classic Trump thing of trying every defense instead of just one. <laughs> just today, Trump claimed on his social media site that Trump-hating Marxist thugs had planned to classify documents while also admitting he kept empty classification folders from meetings and briefings as a, quote, cool keepsake. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, your story is you kept an empty folder as a cool keepsake? Were they Lisa Frank folders? <laughs> Who keeps an empty folder as a keepsake? When I left SNL, I took plenty of keepsakes, but one of them wasn't a stack of loose leaf paper from the copier. Hey, you guys remember the famous cowbell sketch? It was printed on paper, just like this. <laughs> also, you don't get to just take stuff from the White House as a cool keepsake. It's a government institution owned by the American people. When you visited Philadelphia, did you also try to take home the Liberty Belt? Just strap it to the roof of Air Force One. But the differences don't matter to Republicans. They've made it clear they want to weaponize congressional committees to go after Biden. In fact, the guy you just saw in that last clip, James Comer, is the new GOP chair of the House Oversight Committee. Last year, he told CNN investigating Trump's classified documents was not a priority, but now investigating Biden's very much is a priority. So CNN's Jake Tapper asked Comer to explain the contradiction, and he couldn't. What are you saying to viewers who don't understand why President Biden's documents seem like a big priority for you, but President Trump, who took hundreds more documents, did not comply with the subpoena, did not reach out to the National Archives or the Justice Department to say, hey, we found these documents. It's not a priority. Do you only care about classified documents being mishandled when Democrats do the mishandling? Absolutely not. Look, 
we still don't know what type of documents President Trump had. Yeah, we don't know exactly, but we know they exist, right? They released a picture. You remember that? This one that looks like it's from the classified document buffet at Mar-a-Lago. I will have an omelet with ham and cheese and some of the nuclear documents also. <laughs> We don't know every document Trump has, but we don't know what Biden has either. And honestly, I'm shocked Biden didn't just throw them all out because he definitely strikes me as one of those old dads who gets fed up with all the <laughs> that everyone else left in the garage and <laughs> throws it all in a dumpster. Hey, Dad, where's my old Schwinn? Chopped it up with a saw and threw it in the garbage. <laughs> Need a room for my new Harley. You should see your mother and I pull up at Applebee's on that thing. They give us free pop stickers. <laughs> Trump, on the other hand, strikes me as a hoarder. I bet he still has every piece of sports memorabilia he's ever collected in his life, no matter how worthless it is. This right here is very special. It's a football signed by Vinny Testaverde, not the Vinny Testaverde, just a guy from Long Island with the same name. <laughs> Did the grouting on my bathroom tiles. Great guy, still haven't paid him. So that's the new chair of the powerful House Oversight Committee, which has the ability to issue subpoenas and investigate the administration. In fact, Comer just sent a request to the Biden administration requesting visitor logs for Biden's Delaware home, which was an odd request given that people don't usually keep visitor logs for private residences. I mean, I do, but that's only so I can remember all the celebrities that stop by for my famous dinner parties. Let's take a look at the first page. Anyway, it turns out that Biden does not keep visitor logs for his private residence. Some news this morning, we are learning there are no visitor logs chronicling who comes and goes from the president's house in Wilmington. Yeah, of course there aren't. It's a house, not a bed and breakfast. <laughs> Although I would like to see Biden open up a B&B. All right, here are the rules. Breakfast starts at 4 and ends at 4.30. The closest we got to oat milk is what's left over after I eat my Cheerios. So unless you want that in your coffee, shut your yap. At 6, we go out back to chop wood, and then we spend the rest of the day watching Matlock. Oh, and if you're interested, there's hustlers in the credenza. <laughs> also, real talk. You want to know why there are no visitor logs in Wilmington? No one wants to admit they were ever in Wilmington. Hey, it's all jokes, Delaware. You know I love you. I love your beaches, your corporate tax shelters, and the Amtrak station I passed through on my way from New York to DC. It's like the commercials say, Delaware, it's better than Jersey. Barely. <laughs> so those are the kinds of dumb requests the Oversight Committee will apparently be obsessed with now that Republicans are in charge. The bummer is some actual oversight would be great. Congress should hold the administration accountable regardless of party. They should just do it for real stuff that people actually care about. Instead, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has appointed some of his caucus's looniest weirdos to both the Oversight Committee, where they will have the power to investigate Biden, and also the powerful Homeland Security Committee. McCarthy made big promises to Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar, two hardliners, of course, who were kicked off of their committees by Democrats. Uh, last session, they are back on some pretty prominent committees. In fact, oversight, the House Oversight Committee, very, very powerful, uh, will now include Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, Scott Perry, and Paul Gosar. So again, uh, some big hardliner names that are going to be serving in a very powerful position. There is Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. There is Paul Gosar. Those two were thrown off their committees uh, in the last two years by the Democratic-controlled Congress for incendiary and or violent rhetoric. They will get committee assignments back. In fact, we can confirm that Marjorie Taylor Greene will be on the Committee on Homeland Security. That's a coveted uh, spot. That's right, a bunch of people who tried to overthrow the 2020 election will now sit on major committees with the power to investigate the administration, which to me does not seem like a great idea. It's like if you're a prosecutor in a murder trial, you wouldn't want to show up to court and see a guy in a hockey mask sitting in the jury box. <laughs> oh, son of a gun, how'd we miss him? <laughs> it's especially insane to put Marjorie Taylor Greene on the Homeland Security Committee, given that she has previously espoused some pretty unhinged conspiracy theories, like the time she, of course, claimed the 2018 California wildfires were caused by lasers or blue beams of light. She also claimed the wildfires would benefit an international banking firm with a Jewish family name. Green wrote that the beams may have come from space solar generators that collect the sun's energy and then beam it back to Earth. She shouldn't be on the Homeland Security Committee. She should be an actor with one line in the next Avengers movie. <laughs> Thanos is collecting the sun's energy and beaming it to the Earth to cause wildfires. Also, we think Thanos might be Jewish. Cut! <laughs>
That second part isn't in the script. I know, but doesn't it make it sound more believable? Green also spread conspiracy theories about everything from the COVID vaccine to 9-11. And when she was asked about her past support for QAnon, she blamed the internet. The Democrats stripped you of your committee assignments after you right. were elected. That was raw politics. Mm -hmm. But in fairness, didn't you also say around that period that you had been a follower of QAnon conspiracy theories and you had rethought this and you were no longer uh, influenced by the group? Well, like a lot of people today, I had easily gotten sucked into some things I'd seen on the internet. I'm not sure I'm comfortable having someone on one of Congress's most sensitive committees who gets sucked into things they see on the internet. That's the same excuse your mom uses when she spends a thousand bucks on Candy Crush. Mom, again, I got sucked into buying more lollipop hammers so I could finally beat the Jelly Queen. <laughs> now Venmo your mother some money. But this was part of the deal McCarthy made with the crazies in this caucus to become speaker. Remember, Green threw her support behind McCarthy specifically because she wanted to get on these powerful committees, which she bragged about at MAGA rallies before the election. I'm looking forward to Republicans taking back control in the House. And I'm looking forward to serving on committees. It is unnerving when someone says the phrase, I'm looking forward to serving on committees with that much glee. It's like hearing someone say, I'm looking forward to visiting Wilmington, Delaware. I'm kidding, Delaware. I love you guys. <laughs> Philly, on the other hand, Donald Trump <laughs> tanked his party in three successive elections, leaving the GOP weak and fractured. But what we're seeing right now in the House are last vestiges of Trumpism. McCarthy and the far-right extremists he's empowered in the House have made it clear they're going to use their positions to protect Trump, who stashed classified documents the way a teenager would stash a magazine called Melania's Closet. <laughs> this has been A Closer Look. <laughs>